Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, if it is your first time here, um, hopefully you enjoy it and uh, you know hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications. Uh, today I wanted to talk about um, some things that people do early on in keeping that are mistakes. So we're going to go over five things that you want to avoid. Even if you've been keeping for a while, this information can still be helpful. I always try to make sure there's something in these videos for you to learn, uh, kind of no matter where you are at in your keeping, hopefully anyways. Uh, unless, of course, you're way, way up there, in which case you're probably not watching me anyway. So stay tuned. All right, so we said we're gonna do five different things, so I figured why not do five different snakes? So we got this little fella here. Uh, he's actually the last male that I have available. Um, he's from a granite to marble pairing and just thought he'd be a cool first snake to grab out. He just shed uh, at some point since last night, so he's looking really, really nice. Um, great little fella here. So if interested, you can let me know about that. Um, but anyhow, uh, mistakes people make. So people make a lot of mistakes. I make mistakes, you make mistakes. Uh, everybody keeping snakes makes mistakes at some point. Uh, so one of the mistakes that people tend to make is kind of too much too fast. Um, and so that could be a mistake for a number of reasons. Now you look behind me uh, and you can see there those hatchling tubs. So that's for a snake like this size. A lot of people start out, they buy baby snakes. It's very easy to get 25, 30 snakes in a setup like that. It doesn't take up much space. doesn't really take up a lot of time. Um, you know, you clean them a couple of times a week and bing, bang, boom. But what happens is those animals grow. And then these animals end up in caging like what you see over here. Turn this real quick. You know, those, those bigger tubs there. Um, so all of a sudden you need 25 of those it takes up a lot more space. Um, you know, there's not even 25 of those in this, this room. So you really need to be aware of, you know, when you're, when you're playing how many snakes you can handle, what the adult requirements are going to be and plan for a little bit of extra space. Um, you know, that way you're, you're always ready. So, you know, a couple of these short tails might get too big for these enclosures and you need something even larger. Um, so when you're, you're just getting in, or even if you've been in for a while, you need to always be aware of the numbers of animals that you have, the amount of space that you're going to need. Don't bank on, oh, I'm planning on moving or I'm planning on doing this. It'll be cool by the time it's grown up, this will happen, that'll happen. Life sends us a lot of directions. So uh, try to make sure that whatever you're acquiring now you are prepared to take care of, you know, as is if things don't happen. I just want to keep showing him off because he's so, so cool looking. This shed really did a, a great, great job for him. Um, he looks, he looks incredible. He looks amazing. He uh, looked a little dull when he was in shed, but now, now he looks awesome. I'm so excited about that. I love watching them change as they get older and nicer. Um, plus a plus personality real laid back eats great can't beat it love short tails man um, so yeah so be aware that this little snake is going to grow at a fairly reasonable rate um, you know from from baby to adult size anywhere from like two and a half to five years depending on the animal they all grow a little bit different and depending on you know different factors as well genetics all these things but um you really need to be prepared for that. So let's grab another animal. We'll go on to number two. Let me uh, throw him back in his little spot here. And uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. We'll go to one of his half siblings. Oh, do you have a little 
attitude today. Mm -hmm. I'll grab one of the marbles that's same dad, different mom. This baby uh, also just shed recently, also looking amazing. Um, it's a little male here, I believe. Yes, little male. Little orange head marble, can't beat it. So the second thing that I think people need to focus on, and I've mentioned this time and again on different things, is getting the equipment before the animals. So, you know, a lot of people will go out and spend their money. You know, they'll spend $800 on a snake like this, no problem. But then you get into talking about thermostats, and they're like, eh, I don't want to spend $100 on a thermostat. I'd rather get like a $25 one. And then this animal gets cooked, and it's all, oh, my thermostat malfunction killed my animal. I'm so upset. Don't put yourself in that position. Don't be that person. If you have that $800 to spend, get the equipment first. Um, you know, the equipment is going to hold its value for a little while. So even if you get into a position where maybe things change and you don't get the animal, all the better. Um, you know, you can always resell that equipment or hold on to it when you are ready to get, get the animal. Uh, whereas if you get the animal and then things change and you can't get the equipment, uh, you can put yourself into a bit of a predicament. I don't know how long this guy's going to last. He's getting a little bit annoyed. Um, so if, if you do things the right way, it really sets you up for success. So have your adult enclosures ready if you can, you know, before the animals get to adults, even if you have to store them up in the attic or in the basement, somewhere where you can do so, um, you know, whatever it is, but be prepared or, or put the money aside. So at least when it's time, you can grab that quickly. Uh, you look at cage makers right now, a lot of those guys are backed up. Um, you know, several months. So you don't want to get into a predicament where you need something last minute and are unable to get it. So the better prepared you are, uh, the better your experience is going to be as a keeper in general. Uh, I always like to have an extra thermostat on hand. Something could happen at any point. Uh, you're never, ever going to regret having that extra piece of equipment. It's going to come in handy at some point, whether it's for quarantine purposes, whether it's for emergency purposes, maybe eventually you just start replacing equipment. So that becomes, you know, a part of it now, and then you can get another one to replace it later on, whatever you want to do. So have that extra equipment, extra caging, extra tubs, extra, you know, thermostats, whatever it is, you know, even if it's something simple like feeding tongs, whatever, whatever you can have in advance or get before you start getting the animals uh, will make everything go that much smoother for you. While well, he's calmed down a little bit there, going the wrong direction. The orange really gets sucked away, unfortunately, between the lighting and everything, but you can definitely see the marbling really well. Let's see if we can get him on that side too. I love this side of him, especially. Look at that. It's just really, really awesome looking. Very, very happy to have kept this snake and uh, see how he's gonna develop. Well, let's get him back and we'll get somebody else here. Let's see. Hi. Come on. You're gonna be the next contestant here. We'll get ourselves a Sumatran short tail from this year for a numero trace. Uh, one of the babies from Incognito and Midnight Rider. Uh, so number three thing that we're going to talk about is patience. Patience is an absolute virtue for snake keeping. Um, you know, everything about these guys, their metabolism, you know, changes, all these things happen very, very slow. Uh, what I, The mistake I see a lot of people make, instead of starting with babies and raising babies and, and learning the animal's behavior and getting in, they want to breed or they want, you know, these big, beautiful adults right away. And um, when you're buying an adult animal, that animal is going to be used to whatever it's used to. And the transition can be tough sometimes. So if you're not familiar with that species or with these animals in general, you're going to have a lot harder time acclimating that adult animal than you would a younger animal that's going to be a little bit more pliable, um, you know, and still kind of developing, coming into their own personality and all that. So patience is key. Um, I think too, especially if breeding is your plan, you know, the three to five years that you raise up these animals before they're ready to breed gives you a decent base of knowledge uh, so that you're ready when you decide to make that leap. Plus, a lot of people think that they want to get into it and then the reality hits and they don't enjoy it the way that they expected. Um, so I think that getting those baby animals and having that patience to grow them up 
gives you a chance to see how committed you are to it. You know, we all think in our heads that we're going to be very committed and then things sometimes change in life. Our interests change. You know, maybe you were single and you meet somebody and you guys have a whole different life than you expected. Maybe you were with somebody when you got into it and you broke up and now your priorities have changed. There's a lot of things in life that can change that, um, you know, can really, really ruin the experience of what you're doing or take the joy out of it. So you really want to make sure you're committed to keeping uh, before you think about the other stuff that you can do with these animals. And I think that'll really help you also to really have, have a great great experience. So let's swap snakes and uh, go on to our next subject, which the fourth thing that I want to talk about, um, you know, it doesn't tend to happen right away, but it tends to happen a little bit into things um, where, let me uh, sanitize her up, we'll get something out of the other rack here. Um, people get what, I, what I'll call like a false sense of self and uh, you know, you get a little bit of knowledge and you start to think that you know more than you do. Um, and sometimes that can be really, really detrimental to what we're doing. Hi, darling. Get a little side swipe female that I produced here. Um, I don't know if she's been on the channel before. I think she has in some videos, but probably not a ton. Uh, this is a little girl out of uh, Electra and Spot On. Uh, spot on wouldn't be on the channel. He passed away before I started the YouTube thing really or right around when I did I don't remember um, But uh, yeah, she's pretty cool. <laughs> Just give me the stink guy um, You know snake that I like and held back obviously so the false sense of self thing really really is a hindrance because You shut yourself off to being open to listening to others um, you kind of think that you know what you're doing and you don't yet, um, or maybe you know a little bit, but other people can, can always teach you things and always help you learn stuff. I love the neck on side swipe stuff, you know, before you get into that pattern or race. Sorry, just looking at my snakes always gets me off subject because I enjoy them, which is why I hold these ones back. Um, so you want to be open to learning always, uh, and if you approach that every person might, you know, be an opportunity for you to learn something or every, every person might have something they can teach you, you can always throw away what they say later and be like, you know what, no, it's, it's not valuable, but it doesn't hurt to listen. And then, you know, one thing that I like to do with anything, whether it's political opinions, whether it's, you know, whatever you could debate somebody about, I love to adopt the opposite opinion of what I have, you know, look at what the other person's saying and then I try to pretend that that's the truth and I wanna prove it. And I go through and I research and I look at a way that I could prove their point. Now, I may come out of that thing still feeling exactly how I went in, but A, you learn that other perspective and B, you might actually learn something in general that changes your perception or the way that you were looking or doing things. So you always wanna be open. I see too many people that think, uh, you know, they've done something, even if it's for 20, 30 years, um, you know, we learn more and more scientifically. We learn more and more through the time that we're keeping this stuff. So always be open. You can always say thank you for your input, walk away and, and you know, think to yourself, what an idiot if you need to. But uh, too many people get too defensive and don't, they, they take away opportunities from themselves to learn because they're so stuck in their own head. So don't be that person. Be, uh, be a sponge, learn everything you can. Um, Realize that if you've only been in this hobby for five years, 10 years, even if you've been in for 20 years, uh, you don't know everything, you don't know a lot of things. Um, the, the fact is there's so much that we're learning about these animals and so much left to learn. Uh, we probably know like 10% of what there is to know or some stupid low number. Um, so, you know, to, to even think that you know so much is kind of crazy when we're, we're just cracking the surface of, of everything to do with these animals. Sorry, I know I'm like looking away, I'm watching her instead of looking at you guys, uh, but she's so pretty, you know? I don't know how people can hate on Borneos. Look at that, just perfection. So let's get into our last thing here. Uh, and our last thing is more, is less about keeping and more about planning ahead. Uh, a mistake that I see a lot of people making, especially when it's a new species or their first snake, whatever it may be, um, let me pick a snake here. I'm trying to think. 
what we've what we've done and what we can do. Um, you know, this guy came out during the live stream we did yesterday, but I'm gonna take him out again because I love him. Let's play your water, bud. Come here. I love him, love him, love him. One of my favorite Borneos that I've ever produced here. Like I said, he was in the live stream yesterday for those of you, although you're gonna see this on Saturday, um, filming on Thursday. Just love this Borneo. Look at that white, look at that gray, the colors. There's just so much to love there. Um, so what, what my point is with this last thing is people, you, we all have a goal in mind of, of what we wanna do with our snakes. And uh, even if it's just as pets, you wanna handle a certain amount, you might want a snake that displays well, maybe you don't want a snake that, that's on display. Um, you know, even as a pet, some people are more hands-on, hands-off. So it works to your advantage to be open. Research a lot of different species. Hi, bud. Find species that you like and then try to find which one of those species best fits your goals for the animal and your lifestyle. Uh, too many people want to force a snake to fit into what the mold that they want instead of being pliable and saying, you know what, um, you know, I really want a snake that's active and out a lot. Well, this isn't the snake for you. This is not an active species. They're going to sit in their cage and not move sometimes for weeks on end. Uh, but if they find a really nice spot they like and they feel good about it and they're well hydrated and they're fed, they might not move for a long time. Whereas, you know, something like a rat snake might be out quite a bit basking and climbing and moving around and a lot more exciting if that's what you're into as far as keeping. You want to see that visual, have the snake come out, you know, whatever it is. And of course, with any species, building a relationship with that animal can help with that kind of stuff, making sure it's super comfortable and it's set up. But yeah, too many people either have a setup in mind, and instead of picking a snake that fits that setup, they try to force something in there that doesn't belong. And I think that's a huge mistake that a lot of people make, regardless of how long you've been keeping. Um, our expectations are, are too much often of these animals, of what they're capable and, and what you know, really fits them. Look at that. I love that inside part right there. Oh, different colors. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at it as I'm talking at like these guys. Uh, so, you know, an animal like this, I, I think Borneos make really great pets for the right people. And some Borneos are high strung, some are not. He's obviously not a high strung animal. Um, but I do have some that are. And so the ones that are, I have to adjust and not handle them as much. This guy came out yesterday, he's out again today, he doesn't care. I could take him out tomorrow if I want to. It's not stressing him out any great deal. There's always some stress associated with handling. Um, but if you're doing it in the appropriate way and you're reading the animal's behavior and letting the animal kind of dictate, you know, how long you handle for, how often, um, then you're going to have a lot better experience and so are they. Everybody's going to win. Um, and you can see he's super comfortable right now. I don't know physically if he's comfortable because he's sitting in a weird position. But as far as, you know, this is not making him nervous. He doesn't really care. His tongue flicks are good. Nice, long, steady tongue flicks. Just kind of checking out what's going on. He's not bothered by the phone. He's not bothered by me. Just very curious, very interested. Checking it all out, taking it all in. You know, that's a very relaxed animal right there. Um, you know, you can see tension, you can feel tension. So getting a snake that fits for you is, is going to make a lot of sense. So do your research, find a species that fits what you're after, or at least is close enough to where you can compromise and make it work for them and you. Um, but don't, don't take, uh, a species that wants to hide and try to put it on display. Uh, it just doesn't work. And don't take a, a, a species that, you know, is really active and put it in a small cage or a species that, that craves security and put it in a big open glass enclosure. Like you're just not, you're, you're thinking from your perspective and about yourself instead of about the animal. It should always be about them first. You know, there's nothing wrong with having a set of desires, but just pick an animal that fits with those. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you have other thoughts on some things that, that people uh, often forget getting started, you know, this is just a, a random list of a few things. So throw them down in the comments. 
As always, leave a comment, even if it's just say to help, say hello, whatever it is. Uh, it all helps the algorithm here on YouTube. So hit like, hit those comments, uh, stay tuned for some more stuff. Uh, thank you to you guys that were on the live stream yesterday. We did two and a half hours. I think we had a really good time. Um, thank you also to all the members here. I appreciate your continued support. Um, you guys are the real MVPs of the channel and kind of allow me to keep doing this. So much appreciated. Um, and uh, thank you to Sean, who is the newest member. That's pretty exciting. Got somebody new there. Um, so definitely uh, check that out if you haven't yet. And uh, we will see you guys soon. All right. Also, don't forget, if you haven't got your Ron Burgundy gear that is available, um, if you go back to the video where I said there's some big news on that merch, um, you can click the link there. If you go to Ron Burgundy's Meet the Collection, there's a link on that video. And then there's another video I did with him outside over the summer that also has that link there. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. If for some reason you're having trouble finding it, just shoot me a message on Instagram, on Facebook, or hit me up in the comments here, and uh, we can get you a link to that. Thank you, guys. We'll see you.